What is up, everybody? We are back, and it is the BMW Championships, the second playoff event. There's only going to be one more event in the season. Obviously, there's going to be some fall events as well. We'll be back uh, with a full complement of uh, content for uh, those fall events. But yeah, one more event. We're not going to have a live show next week for the Tour Championship, but I will have this video out. Um, the model will be ready to go for you now this week we have a little bit of an interesting tournament because uh the course is going to be held in colorado at castle plans golf club we haven't seen this course for a very long time on the pga tour since 2006 and back then you know it was 500 yards shorter can't really put any stock into how the course played because it does uh it's you know gone through some renovations since then so it's kind of anyone's guess as to how the course is going to play it's a par 72 8,130 yards. This is the longest course in PGA Tour history. Now, it's not going to play that long because it is in Colorado. 6,400 elevation in terms of feet, 6,400 feet. Um, so the ball is going to go about 10% farther than golfers are used to uh, at sea level. So it's going to play around 7,400 yards in actuality. Um, that's still pretty long for a part 72. I'm not sure how difficult it's going to play. I'm definitely going to be keeping uh, my ears to the ground when it comes to the player interviews to see what they say about the course. Uh, maybe we can get some course fit when it comes to uh, the player interviews. But uh, yeah, I think this is a good week to be a little bit more contrarian just because the new course and the elevation both bring in volatility. So I think it's a good week to kind of get away from the group thing because I do think a lot will sort of gravitate towards a certain type of golfer. Um, just based on, you know, podcasts and, and articles and all that. So I do think it's a good way to get uh, contrarian with your builds, especially if you are playing tournaments. Now, the course itself, it's a par 72, like I mentioned. Uh, the fairways here are pretty narrow, 26 to 30 yards wide on average. The rough's going to be pretty thick, so it's going to be about four inches thick, which is uh, going to be tough to play out of. The greens here are pretty small, 5,600 square feet on average, and they are tiered. So it could play a little bit more difficult especially if golfers aren't accurate off the tee, you're going to see quite a range of tee shots. There's dog legs on the course. There's elevation changes, both uphill and downhill when it comes to tee shots. And then uh, there's some blind tee shots as well. So um, going to be definitely more of a unique test when it comes to, you know, PGA Tour golf. And uh, water is in play on, 11, on 10 of the 18 holes, so you could see some penalty strokes as well. And, uh, again, there's only 50 golfers in the field. Uh, so there's not going to be a cut. Everyone's going to be guaranteed to play four rounds. Um, if the winner does come from up top, obviously you're probably going to need Scheffler or Xander and then uh, kind of fill out your, your lineups with the cheaper guys. But if we do get a mid-range winner like we did last week with Decky, the balance build is certainly going to be in play because uh, it's kind of tough to build lineups that you feel good about with guys in the 6K range. But we'll get to that here in a second. Um, yeah, let's cover the... Stats for the week. Again, if you have any strong take, uh, this is a good week to kind of run away with it when it comes to course fit because we don't really know how the course is going to play. I kind of went with an even distribution. So I went 6% off the tee, 6% to total driving, 12% stroke gain approach. I don't have the expected approach column this week because we don't have any data on the course. So we don't know how far we can expect the approach shots to be. Uh, so unfortunately, don't have that this week. Green reg, I have a 0%, but you can bump it up if you want. Around the green at 3%, putting at 7%, birdie better at 4%, bogey void, it's a 4%. Uh, we don't have any course history, so nothing to go off there. Uh, strong fields, who's played the best in the strong fields over the last few years? We've got Scheffler, Xander, Morikawa, Rory, and Fleetwood. Who's played the best on par 72 courses over the last two years? Scheffler, Ludwig, Xander, Homa, and Siwoo Kim. Man, Homa's been really bad. Um, he lost, he's lost over 20 strokes to the green in his last four starts alone, which is uh, not like him. So he's someone to stay away from. And then stroke gain just on courses with Ben and Poa Greens. This is stroke gain total, not stroke gain putting. If you do want those putting splits, they are right here. And this is just going to be stroke gain total on Ben and Poa. The courses that have Ben and Poa Greens, you have Xander, Scotty, Rory, Morikawa, and Sungjae. So, I mean, it's kind of funny to see these four be the top four in both of these columns here. And then, you know, Xander and Sheffler, they're good everywhere. No surprise to see them um, at the top of any of these ranks. Cuts made in recent finishes. Uh, I did bump up short-term form a little bit more than usual. The playoffs are typically when guys get hot and then 
Um, they typically, you know, play well all the, all the way through the playoffs. So bump that up to 16%, midterm 14%, long-term at 12%, which gives us our overall rankings. Uh, once again, Xander clipping uh, Scotty Scheffler. That wasn't the case last week, but it was at the Open Championship. That's kind of why I bet him that week. He ended up winning. Not to say that the model necessarily called that, but um, yeah, anytime you get, you know, a golfer that's not the most expensive, right now number one in the model, I want to pay attention. Um, he's twelve hundred dollars cheaper, so it's definitely going to help the bottom of your rosters a little bit more. He nearly won last week with the second place finish. I think he was tied with two holes to go, but that kid ended up birdie his last two holes. So I do like Xander a little bit more than Scheffler. Um, we've seen Scheffler talk about not liking blind tee shots. Uh, he talked about that at the U.S. Open. Um, he also talked about you know not liking where his ball is going to land and how it's going to react when it hits the ground. So uh, we see that a little bit at the Open Championship. So I do think there's a case to be made for being underweight on Scheffler. Uh, Morikawa at 10-1. He did struggle with the ball striking last week, but continues to gain a bunch of strokes with the short game. We know the iron play is typically good, so I expect him to play a little bit better than he did last week. Rory McIlroy, man, he really struggled. Lost 7.1 strokes ball striking last week and eight strokes putting. I mean, that is not like Rory McIlroy. You play the bounce back narrative. Um, he probably just checked out after a bad couple rounds, so... Yeah, if he's going to want to win the core championship, he's going to need a really big week this week in order to not start too far back next week. Yeah, Blue Big at 10,000. So he's finished uh, Miscat in T40 in his last two starts. I don't have any strong takes. He did fit, I guess in between that, he did finish J18 at the Olympics. But again, that was another small field. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have any strong takes on Blue Big at 10,000. It doesn't look like he's going to get a ton of ownership. I will note that these ownership projections are as of Tuesday – you know, afternoon, and they will change quite a bit up until Thursday. We continuously monitor, you know, content from around the industry, and uh, we'll, we'll be updating those. So um, don't take these uh, to heart necessarily. Make sure to go to Lineup HQ and check those ownership projections closer to lock because it is a good week. To be contrarian, um, Nicky played great last week and ended up winning. He also took, you know, third at the Olympics, got that bronze medal. Tommy Flew was interesting because – he gained 9.8 stroke tee to green last week, one of his better performances ever on the PJ Tour. And then he just couldn't make any putts. And the putter's kind of been cold for a little bit now, but he's 9,600, not a ton of ownership, project pretty well. I do like Fleetwood. Henley was disappointing last week, but he lost three strokes around the green. That's typically not what he does. Um, he's accurate off the tee. He's a good iron player and good around the green. So I do think he's a pretty good course fit, even though it is one of the longer courses that we've seen. Again, the elevation is going to help with that. Um, it's still a fairly long course at 70, if it's playing at 7,400 yards. But I do think Henley's interesting. Aaron Rise has been on fire. So one, one at the window. Uh, prior to that, he had like three top tens in a row, as you can see here. Backed it up with the T16 last week. And he gained eight strokes on approach. So the iron is still good. Um, and again, this is that time of year where people get hot and stay hot. So I do like Aaron Rye. Yeah, Victor Hovland at 10-4. Great week last week. Again, I just can't trust him. I mean, he nearly won the PGA Championship and then struggled for like three straight months and then nearly won last week. I don't I don't know how he's going to react this week. Uh, he continues to struggle around the greens, and that's uh, enough for me to fade him at this price point. I do like Canway. So struggled on a Thursday last week, bounced back to shot 67, 66, and 66 in his final three rounds. He now has uh, – it was a T12 finish, and he's got – Three top fives in his last eight starts. Uh, the ball track keeps turning around. He loves the playoffs. I do like Cantlay. Um, I bet him out right at 18 to 1. I also bet Tony Fina at 35 to 1. So grew up in Utah. Um, he's used to playing elevation, so he's not going to have you know as big of an adjustment with the distances and the yardages as everyone else in the field. So I do like him quite a bit. The irons have been great for pretty much eight months now. Sung JM's kind of struggled in back-to-back -back events. No strong take for me. Typically like him on shorter courses that are par 70s. Uh, Corey Connors, I do think he's a, a very safe play with a, with a high floor. Probably not the guy that I'll look to in tournaments because I don't know, you know, how likely he is to finish top five. But, uh, yeah, you can certainly, you know, build lineups, you know, with him in it with no problem. Billy Horshow back-to-back top 10 finishes, including – I see three top 10 finishes in a row. The ball striking has been pretty good. We know he's a, a good player. We know he's comfortable around water. So those water hazards shouldn't um, you know, impact him much. Davis Thompson at 20%. Don't love that. The model does like him still. I mean, he's 16th overall, and he's only 7,900 on DraftKings. He's been playing well. But, man, I don't like that ownership. So 
If that holds, I will be off of Thompson strictly due to ownership. Wendell Clark from Colorado. So again, like me now, he's going to be used to playing in elevation at elevation. And uh, yeah, he's got top tens in P14 or better four of his last five stars. I think that's great. Um, the boss ranking last week was pretty good. So I'll be in on Wendell Clark. I do think he might get some steam with the you know Colorado narrative this week. North Dog take on Burns. Cebes just continues to have a high floor. He's like top 35 almost every week. I think it's nine of the last 11 now. Um, Adam Scott's playing good golf. I like him quite a bit. Uh, moving down a little bit, we have Akshay, 8,400. Four's been all over the place. Um, you know, T8, T2, and then he struggled and then bounced back with the T12. I think he's a decent course fit given the iron play. I will note that this course was designed by Jack Nicholas. Typically, he places more of an emphasis on a post play than he does off the tee. So guys that are good iron players, because that's what he was. A lot of his courses reward a good iron play. Don't know if that'll happen at this specific course, but don't mind focusing more on approach this week. Uh, Tigal has lost 5.7 strokes on approach in his last two starts. One of the toughest guys in the world to predict. Him and Cam Young never seem to get him right. So um, I'm fine with him. I'm fine without him. Um, not a priority for me this week. Lowry's been striking the ball well, but the short game has been really bad. Uh, Norin. Norin's kind of tough to predict, too, but I do think he's got, you know, what it takes to kind of finish top 10 here at 7,500. So more upside than most in his price range. Crazy Man continues to project well. Um, he started off pretty poorly last week, finished T33, so that was pretty solid. He's now got uh, eight straight finishes in the top 35. I like Pendrith, the bomber that's uh, improving with the irons and a good putter. He'd be underway on McIntyre and Benny on. I do like Jason Day this week. Tagged him up as one of my favorite conviction plays. Four straight top 25. The ball striking has been very good during that stretch. And, you know, his short game alone can get him into the top 20. And so if he has a good ball striking week, I think he could really make some noise this week. At 8,200, um, JT just can't seem to put together four rounds. Cam Young, again, don't know what to do with him. And then, uh, him and Tigala, maybe play them together, maybe fade them both. Um, I don't have a shot take there. Danny, don't think he's a good Danny course. Same with Harmon. I mean, he's fine. He's probably one of the more talented guys in the low sevens, but I don't think it's a great course fit for him. I do like Eric Cole. So he's got top tens in three of his last six. The approach plays back. And he was like one of the more popular guys in DFS for six months at the start of the year. So I think he's interesting. Seth Crocker continues to strike it well. Can't make a putt. Uh, Siwoo Kim lost. He had his worst team of green performance since 2021 last week. I don't love that or that ownership. Keegan hasn't played good since being named the Ryder Cup captain. Fitzpatrick hasn't been striking the ball well. Dietrich hasn't played well in the U.S. Um, for most of his career. He's had a couple of decent finishes over here, but not much. Hoagie. So we want Hoagie when he's striping the irons, and he has not been doing that lately. He's been pretty mediocre, like average with the field in most of his starts over the last couple months. I do like Ekro. Playing a little bit better, back-to-back -to -back top 20s. Um, 6,300 is a good price point. I think he'll be higher than 4% that we have him. Uh, not going to be on Homa, not going to be on Hadwin. Cam Davis is like the one guy in the sixes that I can see finishing in the top 10 because he does have that talent. He could also finish bottom 10, but for tournaments, I think he's got that side we're looking for. I'll pass on Kirk. He was first-round leader, finished T50 last week. I'll pass on Dunlap. Did play well last week, but, man, he's got such a low floor that that does scare me at 9% ownership. I'm going to pass on Jaeger, pass on Poston, pass on Pavon. The only other guy that I might play a little bit of is Will Zalatoris. T12 last week was pretty good. Um, he's now gained across the board in back-to-back -back starts. So, I don't know, at least a little bit. You know, we know the talent's there. So, that'll do it for this week. As always, thank you for watching. Hit the thumbs up if you don't mind before you get out of here. Uh, check out the RG Discord. Going to try to be a little bit more active in the golf channel each week. And, uh, yeah, maybe we'll post some bets in there and have some fun sweating some lineups together. But thank you for watching. We'll catch you next week for the Tour Championship.